Welcome to Pace IT's Career and Entrepreneurship Presentations. My name is Mary Keeney and this presentation covers organization and people. Culture and organizational structure are an important aspect of an organization. You need to set them up correctly from the beginning in order to avoid potential problems later on. We're going to discuss the right organizational structure, culture, and HR issues. There are multiple types of organizational structures. A traditional organizational structure is a hierarchical one. Think of a pyramid with a CEO at the top and the lowest level employees at the bottom. A hierarchical structure is used in almost all large companies. It works for them because of their, the very large number of people and separate departments they need to manage. It also works best for process-based companies such as manufacturing. These type of companies need to adhere to strict rules and a hierarchical organization facilitates enforcement of rules. It comes with a lot of disadvantages though. It is slow to move due to the sequential way of decision execution. Therefore, it takes a long time to adapt to change. These companies usually react to market changes instead of triggering them, but when they move, they create huge movement due to their sheer size. They are also slow because the decisions are made up the chain. The lower level employees are not empowered to do anything without their superior's approval, and the superiors need to get approval from their boss, who needs to get approval from their boss, and so on. This type of decision making encourages unhealthy competition amongst managers. To move up, managers need to beat their competition, and their decisions may be based on what moves them up the chain instead of what's best for the company. Flat organizations are a somewhat recent concept. The company is organized by projects with cross-functional teams and not by departments. The team members take turns being leaders. This type of organization works best for product development and software development companies. Flat organizations are nimble and product development is based on an agile method instead of the cascading method. These organizations move fast and can make course corrections easily without losing too much time or effort. The project-based approach also allows the company to assign only the necessary people to each project. One drawback can be a power struggle with more competitive in individuals wanting to keep leadership roles permanently. However, that can be easily identified and remedied. Usually these people don't last very long in this type of environment. One issue to watch out for is overtaxing people with multiple projects at the same time. This can be remedied by keeping a constant watch on people's workloads to ensure they don't go beyond their limits. Most organizations have the functions listed on this slide. Smaller entities might have combined functions, for example sales and marketing might be in one department and R&D and product development might be in another. Companies that are either large or have multiple products in multiple market segments usually organize themselves into business units. They are separate profit and loss units responsible for managing themselves as independent small companies. They're responsible for designing, developing, marketing, selling, and servicing the products they are responsible for. Business units can be by vertical market, by type of customer, by product type, or by geography. Here is a typical organizational chart for a business unit. Matrix organizations are a combination of functional, regional, or business units. In these situations, a person may have a functional manager and a separate manager based on the region, business, or product. Most Microsoft and most very large organizations are set up like this because they are very large, which is 200,000 or more employees, and have multiple products in multiple market segments, which they sell globally. A simple flat organizational structure would not work for them because they are too complex and too large. Here's an example of a matrix organizational chart. Culture is another aspect to setting up your business correctly. You want to set up the culture that is right for you, while keeping in mind that your current and future employees might, have, might expect a certain type of culture for the type of business you have. A startup software company is expected to have a culture of inclusion, sharing, pushing the limits, and always innovating. You have to spend a considerable amount of time developing the culture. It can make your company a great place to work and allow you to attract future employees easily and keep current ones, or it can make your company a terrible place to work. Nobody wants to come into a toxic environment run by politics and bureaucracy. 
The right culture sets the standards of how employees interact with other par employees, with business partners, with shareholders, and with vendors. It sets the tone on how much the company is involved in environmental and social issues and what it does to positively uh, contribute to these issues. Customers and potential employees alike are interested in the company's position in these issues and what the company does. The right culture sets values by which the company will conduct its business. It sets the ceremonies and rights. For example, are you going to celebrate success and acknowledge employees' contributions, or will, will you reward only the top management without acknowledging the people working at lower levels in the hierarchy? Do you use formal, stiff language to communicate internally and externally? Do you say things are transparent but disclose nothing? Do you let employees know about major events the company is experiencing after they passed, or do you involve them from the beginning? How do you promote your employees? Is it based on merit or the politics they play? These are just some of the examples and issues you need to consider. A human resources department also plays a role in your company. They are responsible for recruiting, hiring, training, and also managing labor relations, pay and benefit programs for the company. They also are in charge of performance appraisals and feedback. Additionally, they enforce labor laws such as all, making sure that all employees are legally allowed to work in the countries where they were hired and that no child labor is allowed. Additionally, that all they check to make sure all employees know about their rights and responsibilities under local employment laws and federal laws. Depending on your business, you might have or want to offshore or outsource parts of the work. It's only finding workforce. It's not only finding workforce in other countries, but also bringing workers from other countries to work in the U.S. on a temporary basis. Outsourcing also refers to contracting with U.S.-based contractors, consultants, and temporary workers. In either case, you will need to make sure you respect all labor laws. We have discussed setting up the right organizational structure, culture, and HR issues. Hope you have found this video helpful and thank you for watching.